Hey Tubers, welcome back for another adventure and for something completely different. Here we are at Charlie's Railroad Museum. He's got quite a collection of stuff here. Charlie, tell me about this Fairmont. This is a Fairmont Model S2. It's got a single cylinder, two cycle engine with two flywheels on it. Um, oh, look if you want to run the car backwards, you have to reverse the engine which is actually part of the fun of it. Yeah, doing it such that it doesn't stall. <laughs> yeah, you have to uh, you have to work with a timer and everything. It's, it's really quite a fun thing to run. Um, this one, I believe, come out of Canada, and uh, I got it out of Maine, Upper Maine. And uh, the reason I say it was out of Canada is if you look at this wheel here, this wheel is called an ice wheel. It's got this little ridge on it that theoretically, if the rail is icy, this will cut through the ice and give you traction. Um, okay. Well, not, it'll, it'll actually break the ice break off the, the ice, rail. But we're yeah. not sure if it actually works, but we got ice wheels anyway. <laughs> so two sets of levers, what's one for timing? One's, one's, one's a break. There's actually one more. It's broken off there. You can see it. Oh, oh yeah, it snapped. That's I the one there. there. There's one there for the uh, timer. And... Uh, one there for um this is the one of them for the this is to take up the belt okay it's a, sli a slipping uh belt clutch in other words you slip the belt for a clutch yeah very yeah. elementary um yeah, this is the brake lever over here there's the belt okay brake lever here okay this is the throttle here that's broken off as you can see and there's another level that goes lever that goes on the other side that's for the throttle now, have you uh, have you had this out on track? No, this one needs a lot of work. As a matter of fact, it barely rolls on its own. Um, what sold me on it was the uh, cab. Yeah, I like the cab. The cab is pretty cool. Um, at some point, we're going to be pulling that off and redoing the fiberglass on it. And at oh, that point, we'll work on the chassis also. But it's uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Head. This is a 1955 Fairmont uh, railroad track speeder uh, called the motor car. It's original from the uh, Boston and Maine Railroad. Uh, as you can see, it's number 617. And I've documented a lot of the different numbers that are close to this one. This was a very popular car. It's another single cylinder, two flywheels. And as you can see, we have the levers here for the... Uh, yeah, all the levers are this, intact. This is, this is uh, for the belt, this is for the brake, this one's for the uh, throttle, and this one's for the timer. So this one you've, you've actually run rail. So this one's running, and uh, I'm having trouble cranking it. Well, ain't none of us getting younger there, Charlie. We're going to take care of that, make our own device, but uh, this is my knocking around car. I've had it quite a few places. It runs great. Gavin is... Uh, very adept at driving it. I hardly ever drive it anymore. He runs it. And uh, it's just a barrel of laughs. We have a little trailer we put it on. The trailer that the yellow car is on, we haul this around on. And, and the, the handles are for turning the car around. I can't pick them either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I can turning it around at a crossing. And unfortunately, I can't do that either. But uh, well, <laughs> working with it. So this is somewhat of a hybrid, huh, Charlie? Yeah, this was, um, the cab on this one, I believe, was uh, shop built by the uh, Lehigh Valley Railroad. This car was a Lehigh Valley Railroad car. And uh, as such, we're going to repaint it uh, orange, which was the original color. And we're going to fancy it up with some stripes on the front. Um, we had to remove the engine to extract a broken bolt in the block. Uh, that's all done. Put a new clutch in it and now uh, just got it back in this week. And as you can see, it's all nice and shiny. So, what is this engine, Charlie? It's a Waukesha four cylinder. So, basically, this shed. <laughs> it's a good shed. I got all my parts in it. This shed on wheels, I need that, um, was actually kind of one of these. Yeah, that... except a lot bigger with a regular four-cylinder engine. Extremely heavy. <clears throat> Make my car, my car trailer squat. 
but um, the idea is we're going to get this back to its owner who's very excited about it because he didn't, ever th didn't think he'd ever see it fixed up and he made me spill the beans and I'm going to paint it for him and everything and I'm so, doing it all for nothing. So it's a Waukesha engine. What's it got for a tranny? Um, Borg Warner T9. It's a truck transmission. It's got um, four speeds forward, four speeds backwards. Because this one here is a little tough to turn like the little one. Oh, yeah. I, I imagine no one's picking this up with a set of handles. But, uh, I'm going to leave the interior restoration to the owner. But I am going to restore the dashboard. I think I could get a look at that old oil pressure gauge. It's the coolest thing. Yeah. So, wow, the tranny's from here back. You must have the shortest drive shaft in the world. It's that long. Thing. It's that long? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Four cylinder. Yeah, that's a quick shot at the gauges. Now, you said 1948 for this guy? Yes. Wow. So. They kind of hacked it together so they could go places and not yeah. feel the wind and so forth. Yeah, well, I think it was designed for for a complete track gang. They call it a gang car. Well, at least they use safety yeah, glass, safety right? Glass, yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Now, we're going to try not to fall over here. I think this thing is just cool. Once again, let me just scan the interior for you yeah, guys. Yeah, and it's got square gears in it, so... When you drive it, you're going to have to double clutch it, which is really cool. Not too many guys know how to do that anymore, sorry to say. Well, I've been driving junk all my life, so well, you know how so do double it. clutching is like second nature. So walk in the park. <laughs> yeah. But you can see how well this is con constructed. I like the way they bowed the top. Yeah. Yeah. And if you took the body off, you'd have this yeah, I see railing that. in the front. You'd have another one in the back, so you could very ably use it. Without a cab, we have all the covers. We've got. He's going to paint the side covers. So and, I guess uh, you you sat one, two, three, yep. four. I guess you could get six, eight guys in you this could, thing yep. trudging along. Yep, that is cool. So here's the back part of the museum. Gas pumps, SO sign. That's another Fairmont. That's a Fairmont M9. It's basically a two-man car, <clears throat> and that zips right along. Uh, I got like halfway through it and started and it stopped, <clears throat> but we're going to fix that up. That's going to be Gavin's car. Okay. Look at that. Gasoline, 20-something cents yeah. a gallon. <laughs> you know what's also cool, Charlie? There actually used to be an old rail line, man, right yes. through your backyard. Yes. When did this close down? This one was torn up around 1920. Uh, to this point, down at the corner, I think it stayed in till 1938. Um, okay, almost down, to the first. Down at the corner, there was a, actually a siding for a creamery. But okay. uh, this they was used the, to do the milk runs. Yeah. They, they had to train for the milk runs. This was uh, the Poughkeepsie and uh, Connecticut Railroad. Wow. Yeah. So this used to run all the way out past the Mina and yep. all that? Yeah, it ran out through, and then there's a junction out on the other side of Stanfordville. Wow, wow. And that's where it ended. This one was only in for about 20 years due to uh, there's a bunch of uh, problems with uh, two railroads competing. And there are spots in this railroad off Salt Point Turnpike down here that you can see where the tracks were actually about 50 feet apart. Um, the PNC couldn't get any uh, trackage rights from the Poughkeepsie and Eastern. They wouldn't give up tra trackage rights. So... Uh, they put theirs. They put their own down. Ooh. Wow, that that had to be cool. So this this rail line didn't last that long. It didn't Not run really. that. About twenty years. Now, come on, I want to show you something. Boy, that had to be. That was a lot of digging, a lot of labor, and there wasn't a lot of equipment back. Twenty years that puts you down around the turn of the century. That means people hand dug this. Well, you, 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 it's funny you mention that because on the left side of the picture you had Irish immigrants and on the right side of the picture you had um, Russian immigrants and they fought like hell the whole time. While digging this? Yeah. <laughs> Cute. Careful. So Charlie, tell me 
about the El Ranchero here and divine intervention. Me and a buddy in 1970 built one of these with a 352 Thunderbird engine and a three-speed on the column, and we gave it a whole candy apple paint job and everything. Three on the tree, Charlie. Three on the tree. When I went away on vacation that summer, I came back and it was gone. He sold it, but I swore I was going to have another one. Well, 50 years later, I finally got it. 50 years, two daughters, and a great family. And here we are. You finally got it back. Got it back. And I built it the way I wanted, 394 speed. Oh, there you go. 390, huh? Yeah. Look at that. It's even current. Yeah. Try and stay away from the uh, wall. Oh. Find me a Tesla that sounds like that. Charlie, yeah. find me a Tesla that sounds like that. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed this adventure. It's starting to rain. We'll catch up later. I want to thank you all for dropping by to watch and comment and subscribe. Please remember, feet down, heads up, get out and enjoy each and every day. Bye now.